Hi, this is Sally Wood for Be Inspired and today I'm going to be showing you how to make some running repairs on chair seats. This one is starting to shred, this one has just given up completely and the lady gave me this cushion here to see if I can make the repairs with that. So we'll see what we can do. Obviously the first thing I've got to do is remove these cushion covers from the cushions. Fortunately the zip goes all the way to the sides. Oh gosh, okay. What was a good half inch seam has just shredded and become torn seam. Never mind, I'll do the next one now. Cut back all of this shredded lengths of fibre because I can't see very easily what it is I'm doing with all of this lying around and I don't want it affecting the way I put everything back together. You have to understand many upholsterers are not able to put zigzags on and many wouldn't even bother. My worst side seems to be that on this one. I think that's the only problem with this particular cover. Let's have a look. Hold it like that and I'll pin that side so I know I need to look here as well. I'll weave the pin in a couple of times so I don't lose it. So if I say to you put a pin in three times, I don't mean put three pins in, I mean put it in and then just weave it like that. So that's one pin in twice. So that'll hold that while I mess with the rest of it. This one is pretty bad too. Here again I'll just cut back some of these loose bits. I mean this is just ridiculous. This was a bad choice of fabric for, for a sofa. This poor chair had a bad hair day. Now on this one the best thing to do is actually remove this panel so I remember that it's this side that's being done. I'm going to put a pin in like that and another one weaving the other way like that so this one is coming out I don't even have to think about it I know I'm going to actually take this side panel out as well so both panels on here have to come out I've carefully remove this panel that I put the cross on not that you can really see it and the other side so I'm just gonna spend an afternoon just kind of taking it easy and uh, unstitching each stitch probably and careful not to pull where I don't need to be pulling because I will ruin the fabric. I will persevere with this while I contemplate how to fix the other one at the same time. Once I've got a little bit open, I can actually hook the stitches out from between like this and it goes a lot quicker then. Okay, so we don't put, put too much stress on the others, just keep the threads short when you're pulling them out. I've gone slightly over, there's the join for the zip. Now I'm going to work down there, see if I can get that out too. Sometimes you just gotta look to see how somebody put them together. It's how when I used to do dressmaking and alterations, I used to very carefully watch to see what other people had done so that I could put them back together the way they should be put back together. Okay, so I'm gonna close that zip up so it doesn't come all the way out. And they might have overstitched this, I'll find out in a minute. If you're gonna use scissors to cut anything, do it very carefully. Because I've got to sew this side in, I'm going to actually undo that a little way. Just maybe two inches on both sides. So that's nice and easy to get to. And now I'm going to carry on down this side. As I'm pulling this, this is just ripping. So I think taking the whole panel out is the wisest idea. And I'm not going to leave those stitches in. I'm going to pull these out. Take your time if you're having to do something like this. But it is worth it in the end because otherwise you've got to buy new fabric and have new pillows made up, which you might not necessarily need to do. Although to be honest, by the time I've done this, it would have probably been easier for me just to make a new cushion. But seeing as it's a sectional, she would have had a bunch of other cushions that she had to pay for. So for her, it's easier if I do it this way. And again, I'm gonna take it a few inches past the seam. So here's the first side out. I'm going to remove those pins because I don't want to lose them. Now I'm going to take the second side out, but I'm going to keep that as a pattern. This is the side where the zip goes into, and as you can see, the zips actually open all the way to the end. And I don't want that ripping out. So I'm going to secure that on this side through here. So I'm going to just put a pin on this side going through both sides of the fabric, including the zip. I'm going to push that over so there's no stress on that. I'm going to do exactly the same on this side. And here I'm weaving it, so it's got a couple of 
little pieces to hold. So that's that side. And then just along here where the zip is, I'm going to put another one. And I'm literally going to put that in here through to that side and across like that so it can't move. And then that's when I'm going to start cutting down here and getting rid of this part of this seam and hopefully a zip that's not going anywhere. If it pulls out, I'll just have to put the slider in, move the zip slider all the way through and restart at the other side, but I prefer not to do that if I can help it. Just got all of those out without disturbing any of that. Still nice and tight in there. If you can do that, good for you, because it's a little bit awkward. I've, I've tried doing it before and it's all fallen apart, especially on a fabric that's um, fine and the pins won't stay in. I've just taken the bottom side out here and when I look at this, this is really quite shredded along here. So I'm going to have to be really careful when I take this little bit out. I don't even know where the stitches are, to be really honest with you. Okay, I found some here that I can snip and maybe use to my advantage. This is almost shredded across where the seam is, which is why I'm doing it stitch per stitch so that I don't mess anything up more than I really need to. They're so awkward to see because there's nothing really holding them in place. This is quite a puzzle. I'm only, I'm only doing it this way because I really don't want to um, make more of a pig's ear of this than it already is. And I'm actually going to go a little bit further so that I'm on good fabric. So when I come and pull it all back into place, I'm using the good stuff, not the bad stuff. I'll snip that across there. So this is on this side and that's on that side, which is why I was uh, cutting back those lengths earlier so that they wouldn't pull any more apart than needed to be pulled apart. I'm holding onto the fabric so it won't shred as I'm pulling these stitches out because it's so fragile on this edge. Now with a bit of luck you won't have this problem, it would be hopefully just the seam giving out. I've got this side and this side open of the same cushion. I've undone the side of the pillow like that. Place one of the straight sides on here. What I'm going to do for the first one is I'm just going to fold it like this. I could get three out if necessary, that's good. And this is going to be the first one that I'm going to cut. If you fold your fabric over and just cut on that fold, you'll get a straight line. So that's the first one. I'll lay that back on top. Now I'm going to give it a little bit extra up here because this is not straight rate but not too much maybe um, an eighth and there wasn't anything really wrong with the uh, length so I'm just going to cut down here in a straight line and again at the top now I'm going to give a little bit extra at the top and then just cut along the base here that's one side cut and then pop this down and on here again it's just the one side that suffered so I'm going to add the extra on there cut either side. I've cut it a little bit wider because then I can add a little bit extra to the seam without making the top look a bit weird. So I'm going to be adding the new border. I'm going to do it with the new border at the bottom so I can lay this on top like this and center it. And when I say center it because I've allowed a little bit extra here and a little bit extra on that side to sew it and then I can also see the previous sew line which is I don't know whether you can see it but it's a, a darker line here where it's all started to pull away I'm going to just sew that together because of the way the fabric is I'm actually going to put it a number three which is the smaller stitch and uh, the original line I'm going to run on the inside of this foot here slightly deeper seam and just go straight across and then when you get to the other end just go all the way to the outside edge of the under border you don't have to go forward and back on either side because it actually goes further than the end if it was if they both ended at the same place then you'd have to but you don't in this instance having put this end in I'm going to make sure that's upright and uh, follow the seam up to the zip end. I'm going to show you how to do the part where the zip is actually wide open. 
because where it's closed it's just like doing the other end it's nice and easy this end is a little bit more complicated I'm going to lay this on top like this just like I did at the other end make sure that's there and that's there that that actually matches so raw edge to raw edge end there so I'm going to go forward and back the raw edges run together across the top here and I'm actually using the original stitch line so I'm going to just carry it on in towards where I uh, pinned it so I'm going to remove the first pin I'm not going to pull on it I'm just going to hold it firm and I'm going to sew over the edge there like I would anywhere else as I get to the centre where the zip is I'm pushing from this end forward so there's literally no stress on that zip oh sorry I went over a pin that was that noise no damage done and just carry on going when you get across the zip readjust the border to match the end here and of course on the side here too when you get to the other side just go forward and back I'm going to remove the second pin I'll just check that everything went in and there is the zip exactly where it needs to be before I finish on there I'm going to pop it back underneath and I'm going to do that zigzag that I rather like so I'm going to go across a zigzag across a zigzag that should stop this from being torn apart too much if it does it's only going as far as the zigzag straight stitch back onto a number three straighten out my sides and unusual to me I'm going to put the border on the top and the top or bottom of the cushion underneath and you can see where it's starting to rip the reason being is the fabric that was at the top or bottom of the cushion has been used and worn and it's stretched compared to what I'm putting in so I need top to fit the new side so I'm going to do it upside down I'm also running the two raw edges together on here and I am going to make sure that that is a generous half inch seam allowance so if it goes up to five eighths of a seam allowance like in dressmaking don't worry about it and hold that in position here as I start a good couple of inches back as I get to where the seam is I'm going to adjust everything and sew over the top here once I'm over there I'm going to hold on to this bottom edge pull it grab it in the center like that readjust the side border so the raw edges are together and if it's a little bit tuftier on the underside that's fine that's better actually and I'm going to carry on going down I'm going to put a little bit of tautness but not very much and then when I get halfway along I'm going to re reorganize that and the reason is I'm going to have to be very careful because it looks like it's pulling out here too we'll tackle that in a minute we just need the side in make sure all of the loose bits of thread are all going out of the side so I don't have to cut them and as I get to the bottom I'm going to make sure this seam is facing forward I'll just go across there make sure everything's in place I'm not going to carry on going round I'll, I'll show you what I'll do in a minute so I'm going to finish there flip it around like this so there's the front border I'm going up towards the zip border pop it under at least half an inch they literally only gave a quarter of an inch seam allowance so it's no wonder this happened to these cushions pop it down line everything else up make sure all the threads are facing out of the seam and then sew again I'm going to split the seam I'm going to hold it at one end pinch it in the middle a little bit of tautness but not too much I don't want to pull it all out of shape go to the other end and I get about halfway along repeat Again, make sure the seam is facing the front of the cushion and then over the seam and finish. Now, having got both sides in, I'm going to flip the cushion to my favourite way of doing it, which is the top or bottom of the cushion cover being up and the border being down. Pop that underneath there and I'm going to sew all the way around the front of the border 
with a half inch seam allowance, which will cinch it in a little bit. So let's start going. Go around the side, pull the border down and sew around in an arc. It's not cinching it in very much, but it will put an extra layer of security on this cushion. I'm going to go all the way around the front and match up to where I'd stopped on the other side. I'm going to do this on both sides of this cushion. Now this is the cushion that only has the rip inside. So I am just going to snip along here where the sewn stitching is and again down here at the bottom. That's to release it and I'm just going to zigzag across here like I did on the other seat cushion. It just uh, stabilizes the original stitching and it should stop this from tearing. So let's, let me do that. Hopefully that'll just give that a little bit more support. This is already given here, but it hasn't pulled so far that it will all come out. So I don't need to replace that. And I'll just do that, oops, again on the other side before it gets bad. It's exactly the same. I've just cut the stitching. Oh, I'll take that off because there's nothing I can do with that. That's excess. So I'll just zigzag along there too. That should stop any more of that uh, pulling apart. All I can really do for this one, because the uh, you can see here the seam is so close to the edge, that's why it's given. Okay, because the, the back of the cushion hasn't pulled apart on either one of them. So I'm just going to start a little way in from the back here and sew all the way down. And um, I'll do that on a straight stitch. And I'll hold, make sure that all of these edges are together. Now I'm giving it a 5 8 seam allowance so it takes it quite a bit further in. And when I get here, I'm actually going to have to remove some stitches. But the stitches aren't holding this together. They're the ones that are in here. I need them gone so that I can easily move this up here into place. Otherwise, the stitches will hold everything where I don't want it. So I'll just pull that one up carefully and snip it. The reason I'm keeping it on the machine to do this rather than remove it is because I want to sew it down as soon as I've got it clear enough for me to work it into place. There's only a few stitches but I'll probably take it back an inch from here so that's up to about here and when I look at the seam I realize I've actually got to take it further back. It's holding this part in as well. It's only removing a few stitches but it's just to release the top enough that I can maneuver the torn fabric into place better and more easily. I'm actually going to take it up to where my sewing foot is because that's where it starts pulling out. Now having done that I can now move that further over so the raw edges here are a little bit over the raw edges from here. Not by very much. That would start putting that into place. This is such a mess. A shame it went like this. I'm sure the sofa wasn't cheap. Quickly remove these stitches only because they irritate me. Now the stitches act like a stay stitch which means that I wouldn't be able to stretch this bottom fabric if I want to. So by removing these stitches I can stretch the fabric if I need to but hopefully I won't need to. Well that's got me a little bit further down so when I get there I'll pull more out especially as they kind of hold parts of this in place which I don't want. Again I'm going to roll the fabric with the raw edge here where it's all fluffy is slightly further over than the side and carry on going. I'm not sure whether I'm going to get all of this in but at least it'll be in enough that it will hold. Pull some more of these out because I'm nearly there. As I um, go along here I've really got to make sure all of these wispy lengths are in place. Not too far over otherwise I'll shorten everything too much. So I'll hold those down. I can feel 
the edge of the seam under my fingers and I'm running this part where it's just about woven in along the inside edge of that foot because as I say I can't take too much out but if this lasts her a year she'll be pleased that's what she said to me just make sure I can use it for a year so I'm going to carry on taking some more of these stitches out because I can feel it not wanting to give. I've just taken out the stitches that hold this part together so that I can move that too and I'm just going to pull it over slightly again fold this seam here that I've just zigzagged over forward because I'm getting to the front of this front of the cushion and carry on stitching down like on the other seat cushions I'm just going to pull the border round and I'm going to come in an eighth of an inch from the original seam because we're altering the shape of the border slightly because of the intake on here it will pucker a little bit but not too much and I'm just going to carry on sewing all the way around the front of here to join up with the front of the other part that I've just sewn make sure all of these threads are facing away from the seam I'm trying to keep bulk out of the seam and say so I'm still pushing the, the fluffiness out of the way now as I come around to the second corner pull the border sort of towards the middle like this as you go around and it should take some of the puckering out might might not it's a theory <laughs> go around carefully adjusting all the time so that uh, it doesn't get too bulky now this side it's just sewn really close and will start giving again I'm just going to carry on sewing all the way up as I come to the seam that I zigzagged over I'm pushing that forward and I'm going to just sew all the way to the back of this seat cushion now I'm going to do this on the other cushion as well so like the other cushion, they're going to be slightly smaller on the top and bottom than they were originally, but not by too much. With a bit of luck, the smaller stitches will hold it. Now, I didn't bother about zigzagging on this one because this at the back wasn't giving. Most of the pressure is on the front. Now I'm going to tip this over. On this side, I'm going to just do like I did on the other side and I'm going to cinch it in a little bit. When I get to the pins where I marked earlier, I'll do like I did on that big split. Okay, so again, I'm sewing it um, an eighth in from the stitching here. On this side, all I've got to do is unpin that and remove some of the stitching very carefully. And this is just so I can move it slightly over and uh, secure the stitches a little bit better. Okay, having unstitched a little way both both sides of this area that needs to be cinched in, I'm going to pull it up so the raw edges are together. And I actually don't have to pull this one over so far because it's only this small section that's really given. I'm still going to give it the extra seam allowance. So it's going in at 5 eighths. I'm going to just carry on working my way down. And again, push the zigzag forward and so on round to the back of the cushion altering the border as you go around the front right on the top and bottom of both of these cushions I'm going to set it up with my zigzag and I'm going to sew the, my new stitch line just on the inside of this foot so that the next stitch line goes quite close and should hold everything in place. Now I'm going to go along the back. I know I didn't touch the back when I was mending it. Coming up to where the tear was and what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down all of these loose ends like that so that they can't get wrinkled up with the foot as it goes through and carry on sewing. It should hold most of this in place because I'm using these, the zigzag with the extra stitches that go straight, that will help stabilize this seam and the stitching and hopefully prevent this from fraying again. 
because it's really where the the uh, weave is these thicker threads are the ones that get rolled out of the seam when the chair is being used this is not uncommon I've done this a few times over the years for people as with the freight boards and make sure that you catch as much of the good stuff as you can so I'm catching as close as I can to my new stitching just to hold that in place and hopefully it will hold with the strength of the new border on the side and likewise with this with the replaced border it should hold against the strength of the top part so let's trim all of that back because it's a bit knotty and I'll carry on going all the way around this one too it's a bind it uses up a lot of uh, thread and it's slow but it's worth doing this way when I had a workshop and people working for me a long time ago I had uh, two industrial sewing machines that only do straight stitch and then I had an old domestic machine my girls and I would zigzag seams when we were worried that they would fray but most upholsterers don't have that ability they just send it out if I was to set up another workshop I'd certainly have a domestic machine I had a serger but nobody used that because if you cut the seam back too far, like a serger does, and you have to alter it, you didn't have enough space. So I never used a serger. But being able to overstitch seams that would fray was really important. The easiest way to put these cushions on would be to basically roll them on. So I'm going to put the front border, which is this part of the band here, along the top like that. Put the corners to corner. So there's my front corner there. I won't pull it down, it will stress it too much. So I'm going to just push that into there like that. And then pull it across the front. Keep as much as you can at the top. Here's the next corner. And I'm just going to pull that over like that. Getting these ones started is always a bit of a pain actually. Especially when the cat takes up the table. I keep shoving him off today and he's not taking the hint. Once I've got it started, I'm going to push down and pull it on like that. And when I get a little bit on one side, because if it gets rucked up, it won't go into place anyway. So I think that's going on there. These things are a workout. Push it down and ease it up. I'm trying not to stress the uh, seams that I've just put in. Just push it down and pull the next section on until you've got it all on. I sometimes sit on them if the foam is too hard for me to push down. That works too, but this foam isn't too bad. These were quite something. But uh, you can see it's all gone in here and uh, it looks like it's new. I'm really quite pleased with it. Thank you for joining me today. I hope that I imparted at least some, some tips, not many maybe. You can use the same technique if you were to replace the top of a chair seat. You take it out and you use it as a template, like I did for the side borders on one of these. Can't remember which one it was. It's well worth doing. No point in throwing something out if you can save it. So, oh, please subscribe. Hit the bell button if you want to hear more from me. A few thumbs up would be really nice. Um, I'm getting there slowly. And uh, in the meantime, take care. See you later. Ciao. Hi. Oh, Peter, can you turn that down for a minute, please? Thank you.